Hi YouTube, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can find us on the web, caltoncutlery.com. Uh, I had a couple of fellas asking me if I got anywhere with the um, the new contact wheels for the 2x72 treadmill powered grinder. Um, I did a couple of videos, I don't think I showed any videos of me casting the wheels, uh, but I cast a couple of these wheels out of aluminum. In fact, on this grinder, this is the new 9 inch, uh, this is your contact wheel. That is a, I think it's about a 3 inch ish uh, tracking wheel. And then the drive wheel is way back there. I may end up having to make a new drive wheel, that one seems to have a little bit of wobble to it. Um, and the way the, the frame set up, I think I might want to have a little bit wider uh, drive wheel also, just to give me more latitude in the tracking. Because this setup has got removable tooling arms. But anyway, um, we'll run this one right quick and then, uh, uh, and then I'll show you how easy it is to swap them out. Show you the, the other new um, contact wheel, the one that's got the, the rubber cast on it. But anyway, again, this, this grinder right here, it's got a treadmill motor on it. And those treadmill motors are uh, open frame. And so, uh, apparently, from what I'm told, if you run that open frame motor just out in the open, it will suck up uh, enough dust and grit, um, you know, metal shavings and all that kind of stuff that will burn them up. So that the motors inside that enclosure. This fan right here is out of an old dishwasher and it's got a um, piece of filter material on in between the fan and the box. So the second you flip that switch on, your on off switch, that fan comes on and pressurizes that box with air, with, you know, slightly filtered air. And then, um, you know, there's a couple of gaps and everything in the, in the box. So the enclosure that's got the motor and the controls, uh, well, the control board for the motor, is under pressurized filtered air all the time. So any of the cracks or anything, you know, it's got air coming out of it, so dust can't get back in there. You know, whether that's going to make that motor last a lot longer or not, I don't know. I've already got uh, a spare treadmill motor, and then I think that's a, I think that's a half horse, um, totally enclosed motor. You know, motors aren't that big of a deal. So anyway, so turn the on-off switch. That powers up your control board and powers up the fan um, to pressurize the chamber. And then you've got a uh, potentiometer right here. As you bring it up, grinder starts running. So it's nice and variable speed. I was playing with it earlier today to see how slow I could get it to go. And then get it to where you can almost read the lettering on the back of the belt as it goes by. There you can see it right there. But anyway, that's about as slow as it goes. As it comes up, you start getting some vibration, which I think is that, that drive wheel, but, you know, that's nothing but a thing. I can go ahead and cast up another wheel and, and uh, uh, you know, cast it up, stick it on the lathe, turn it, and it'll be ready to go. Anyway, pull down on it. There's that 9-inch wheel. It's only a 9-inch because the, the swing on my lathe is a 9-inch swing. And I still have to coat this with the, uh, the castable uh, polyurethane rubber that I got. But anyway, to swap these arms out, you just loosen up these, these, well, they're just bolts with handles welded on them. Pull that one out. Here is the one with the uh, castable rubber on it. Pop it back in place, and this is just one inch, um, just one inch square tubing from Home Depot. Um, I suppose if I have a problem with it not being, you know, stiff enough, then I can go down uh, to the steel yard and get some solid tracking mechanism up there. And it seems to be running uh, running pretty good. Um, 
you know, I haven't ground a whole lot on it. I uh, basically just grabbed, grabbed a knife that still needs ground and just kind of played with it some. You know that would be uh, that would be for hollow grinding the blade bevels, which I'm not a real big hollow grinder. So you know, mostly what I built this for was for the occasional customer that wants like fullers in their choppers. Um, I may end up playing with some differential ground kitchen knives. You know, so like uh, the right hand side of the blade would have uh, you know a convex or a chisel grind. And the left hand side of the blade for a right hand person would be, you know, a very shallow hollow ground, you know, and that way it might help out with food release. Like if you're cutting something that's uh, that's real sticky to the blade, like uh, potatoes or something like that. Um, so I might play with that some. Mostly what I built this for was, um, you know, just to have, because there's a lot of operations that you want a wheel for instead of a platen or a slack belt. So this machine is basically for for those type of jobs you know when a customer wants like I said fullers and a chopper well you know I've got a two inch two inch wheel there that's a that's a commercial wheel I think that one was like sixty bucks speaking of which I mean is that crazy or what Sixty bucks for an aluminum wheel with a couple of bearings and coated in uh, coated in rubber and uh, and a shaft, you know, and that didn't even include the arm, you know. Whereas this right here is, you know, old pop cans and uh, you know aluminum alloy wheels, you know, whatever it was. I melted down for scrap. Uh, I think maybe a buck and a half for bearings. A dollar for the the all this is is a half inch bolt just a half inch bolt that goes in one side out the other you drill and tap a hole for here or through the the tubing so that you thread that bolt in there lock it down with uh, the nut spacer out a half inch copper pipe I mean a little bit of time at the foundry which is fun anyway I mean melting metal is a, is a real kick in the seat of the pants anyhow and then a little bit of time on the lathe uh, but this new castable rubber um, I'm really excited about it um, I guess I'll have to you know run it for six months to a year and then uh, and then come back and give you fellows an update but there's also a small wheel attachment that's one of my next projects is to make a real nice one of these and then I think I've got a five inch wheel also which that's just that's just a caster wheel off of uh, some sort of industrial type cart just drilled out the the center pressed a uh, automotive water pump bearing in there um, drilled a hole and for the the bearing shaft to go in but anyways that's an update on the grinder with the new drive wheels I believe this one's a six inch and this one's a nine inch they've got bearings installed so they're getting put into service and uh, and on the whole grinder and everything hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time